Hi, it's Kernatex here with the first in three videos of um, different methods of copying um, a Linux installation to another disk. Um, the reason behind these videos is that I've had several requests on the channel to um, show how to um, create um, either disks for installing Linux from scratch or for duplicating um, a pre-made or a previously made Linux from scratch installation. Now while, while it may be possible and it certainly would be possible to um, create an installable disk um, to write to an optical disk to install on other machines with LFS, that's not really the point of it um, and quite apart from that it would be quite a bit of work even with some of the kits that are available to do this um, it would be quite a lot of work, there's lots to consider to make a disk that's bootable and usable on, on many different machines um, so I'm not really keen on that idea myself, I think that um, if you want to do that sort of thing you're, you're into designing and creating your own distros basically distribution basically so um, I think that's that's a complete world and unto itself um, there's things to consider the kernel what sort of hardware you're going to support how you support various di different bits of hardware memory disk space and so on there's um, lots of things user input languages and so on it's um, you could go on forever really if you going to do that and I would suggest also that it's probably the reason why although there are many distributions that's you know there's probably hundreds I should imagine um, there's probably not thousands or hundreds of thousands because it is not that that easy to do um, and as I say I don't think it's really the point of Linux from scratch Linux from scratch while it's good it's you can do lots with it and I, I do do lots with it um, the real point of Linux from scratch is to teach um, teach you all about the Linux system itself um, and while you can do lots of other things with it that's not really kind of something I really want to concentrate on too much myself. Um, what I will do and what I'm going to be doing with these videos is to demonstrate how once you've created a, uh, an LFS installation how it's quite easy to replicate it on different disks um, or, or to another disk um, to use in other systems so I, I personally use this myself um, if you'll notice on my channel at the moment I'm um, compiling and uh, publishing videos of that compile um, of Linux from scratch on a 486 purely for the fact that I'll take that image and utilize it on various different architectures um, you know, from from other 486s to Pentium to Pentium Pros, um, I've got a couple of or, or one machine with a um, dual CPU uh, AMD system, so it's um, perfectly usable on all those systems, and I use that for other projects. Unfortunately, because it's 32-bit, you probably I don't know if you could make a multi-lib. Um, distribution with it you might be able to I'm not sure I've never never really done that and I'm, I don't know enough about that to say for certain that would be possible but you, you certainly wouldn't be able to make a um, pure 64-bit distribution with it without doing um, cross compiling so you'd be recompiling anyway but you could certainly boot a 64-bit machine off off of the images and creating so I thought because it's um, you know I'm, I'm doing something that um, is as uh, useful for me I can show how the um, how it is easy to replicate or to actually duplicate um, uh, a Linux from scratch installation and in fact you could probably do this for just about any other um, Linux system and possibly for any other operating system really because the the method would more or less be the same the only thing is with with other operating systems you'd have to take into account again the hardware um, any other disks that are in the system and so on the type of architecture you've got um, with the Linux operating system 
you probably don't need to worry much about anything apart from the IP address on the new machine or the new disk that you're creating the new image um, the host name as well and the um, hosts file which are all in ETC reason being um, if you ran the new image on a network with the old image then you'll get a conflict and you'll find that one or the other will be fighting um, for the network and it will be kicking the other one out so um, that's something to bear in mind but if, if it was purely a standalone without any network link or you were to use one of the images at a single time then you wouldn't need to do that but it's probably recommended to do that I've done it myself I've um, uh, duplicated um, Linux from scratch and then booted up the new one while I've still got the old one running and um, I've had all sorts of problems with the network and it's not until you realise that you've got two machines with the same IP address and the same um, host name as well that that's where the, the problems occur so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do three videos and the first video I'm going to do, which is what I'm doing now I'm going to do um, a demonstration how to copy disk to disk on the same machine the second video I'm going to demonstrate how to copy from um, one disk on one machine to another disk on a completely different machine and then the last video I'm going to sort of combine the first two um, and what we're doing is I'll be creating an image and then replicating that image onto a disk that's on the same machine and also onto a disk on a remote machine so I'll just sort of combine what I'm doing in the first two videos into one for the third one but doing it with with an image rather than actual disk to disk so what I've done is I've set up a machine here in VirtualBox I'll just show you what the setup is and I've got the first disk which is the actual boot disk I've got an optical disk with a bootable um, Linux image and then I've got another disk which is the empty disk the new virtual disk one now we can't just boot a machine and duplicate a running system you've got problems such as files that could be open handles open temporary files open um, you've got, also got things like the virtual file system such as proc and sys which will have entries in them and if you try copying them then you'll be creating an actual files on the destination um, system which is not what you want because proc creates its own files and there could be problems where it's trying to create a file that already exists and so on and I wouldn't know what happens then but it's, it's not what you want so that's why we've got a bootable um, live CD I'm using the Gen 2 one which I used um, in uh, my building Linux from scratch videos um, you could probably use just about any live CD to do what I'm going to demonstrate here. I don't think there's anything um, I'm going to do that's particular to any distro. They're all very basic um, Linux commands going to be running. So it's your, your choice what you want to boot from. So that's that. So what I'm going to do is cancel that. I'm going to start the machine off. And what I'll do is press F12 when the message comes up because I want to boot to the CD-ROM. I don't want to boot to the hard disk. So I'll just press C there. So this is the menu for the Linux Live uh, DVD. And I'm going to choose the AMD64. Just just always do 64-bit stuff generally unless I'm dealing with my older 32-bit stuff. And I'm going to press Tab. I'm going to type in a keyword NOX for no X. I'm, I'm just going to do stuff at the command prompt. So I'm just NOX means don't start the X session up. And I'm going to do another one, key map equals UK, just to automatically set up the UK keyboards. Um, reason being, when it asks for the key map, you only get about 5-10 seconds. It's not long and quite often miss it. So I'm just going to run that and wait for it to give me a prompt. Now one key thing um, when you're duplicating is um, 
you need to make sure that the target disk, the one you're copying to, is either exactly the same size or bigger than the one you're co copying from. Um, in my demonstrations, I'm going to be um, using disks that are exactly the same size because they're the default size when you create um, a disk in VirtualBox, which is 8 gigabytes. So if I do fdisk minus L, you'll see there is the um, sorry, I can't highlight because I'm in a text window. But there, def SDA is the main um, Linux from scratch that I built in my demonstration of how to build it. Um, so that's the uh, disk that I'm going to be copying from. And then SDB is the brand new disk that I'm going to be copying to. And you can see it's not got no partitions. And if you're paranoid, you could do something like uh, use OD to show that it is blank and as you can see it's running through um, and every single byte on that disk is set to a zero so it just shows that it's blank so what we're going to do and by the way if you do this on a real machine and you've got other disks or other partitions you really want to be very careful with the commands I'm going to do now because um, you don't get any questions are you sure or really sure as soon as you press enter this command runs and if you've typed in the wrong um, disk designations that's it you've 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 started the copying and if you've put the wrong ones in you you will overwrite stuff and because it's disk to disk it's going to be doing it extremely quickly um, so within a fraction of a second things like partition tables boot sector is going to be wiped immediately um, so just be extra extra careful so the command we use is dd and we need to tell it the input file well the input file is actually a block device which is the disk SDA so that's the source the input file and the output file is the destination which is the target dev SDB Now we want to specify a block size to ensure that the um, all the copying is done on correct boundaries and the safest to use is a block size of 512 which is the standard sector size for a hard disk. Now there are newer disks which use 4096 bytes per sector um, so if you are using them you're quite welcome to put that figure in um, and you can actually do a lot lot bigger what I should do is start this off and show you how slow this is first of all I'll put the status progress on the end of that just so I can see how slow or how fast it's, it's moving so I'm going to start this copying and you'll see that that's settling down to about 60 megabytes per second as it's copying reasonably fast but not the fastest so if I set this to 4096 bytes assuming it was a 4k sector hard drive you'll see the figures jumped right up it's gone up by approximately five or six times so it's a lot faster if you want the fastest block size that you could use the thing to do is to take the number of sectors the disk has got and divide it by two and whatever figure you get at the end of that um, the number of times you divide by two if you do two to the power of that that's the maximum number of um, or, or the block size that you can copy um, that will fit in uh, correctly into the sector size now I can't really show that on VirtualBox because VirtualBox creates hard disks which are exactly divisible by two all the way up to the their size as far as I can remember so it's that figure there so but generally I found that probably about 90% of discs will you can you can use a block size of 8192 8k um, some you can do block sizes a little bit bigger um, before you get a figure that's not divisible by two but 8192 is um, pretty likely as I say about 90% of the time pretty, pretty likely to be a good good figure to go off go for if you're paranoid and you've got time stick with 512 you can't go wrong with it um, but if you take the 
a size of the disk in bytes, um, divided by two, and then the number of times you divide it by two, you do two to the power of that number, and that will be the maximum block size you can use without um, without risking going over any boundaries or anything. So I'm going to use 8192, and you'll see this will crack along at a good old pace. So you can see it's doing 300 megs per second there. So it's 8 gigabytes, it's already done a quarter of it, we'll just wait for that to finish. Okay, so that's copied. So to check that it has indeed done that, we can do FDIS minus L again. And you can see now SDB has got the same partition information, should be identical, of course, as SDA, which is our source. We can also check the disk. So we want to check SDB2 because that's the Linux partition. And you can see it says it's clean, it's not found any errors, which is what you'd expect if it's done a bit for bit copy. So what we should do now is shut down the machine. And we're going to go into settings now. Go to oops, storage and we're going to get rid of this uh, original disk. And we're going to uh, change, uh, remove the disk from the optical drive as well. So all we're left with now is our new um, disk that was empty. So if we click OK on that, and now reboot the machine, hopefully it will boot without pressing any buttons. There's the grub uh, menu screen. Let's press Enter, and there it is firing away. So that's how we've duplicated um, from one disk to another on the same machine. So if I just log in as root, I'll show you the files that need to be modified if you intend to run this disk on another machine. So you need to look at um, host name. So that name would need to be changed. You'll need to look at hosts so that name there would need to reflect the host name of this machine that you've changed in host name. And lastly, you'd need to alter the network uh, configuration file for the network adapters that you've got on the machine. And you'd need to change the IP address, which is that one there. So that would need changing as well. After you change those three things, you, you wouldn't get any problems at all running the two um, systems on the same network because they both will have different uh, host names and different IP addresses. Okay, so that's the um, first method for duplicating. In the next video, I'll show how to duplicate from a disk on one machine to a disk on a remote machine. So thank you very much for watching this video and see you on the next one. Goodbye.